What is up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're doing a little bit different setting. We're in the office doing some Fusion 360 work, getting ready to make a 2D cut file and get it cut out for an alternator bracket on a Fumman swap for my buddy Sam. Uh, he's getting ready to put his engine back in and he needs this alternator bracket done. So I told him I would get to it this week. Um, as you can tell, I've kind of already drawn it a little bit previously. I don't know, a week or two ago I started on this. And uh, so we're going to finish modeling it in 3D and then we'll turn it into a 2D, 2D pattern. We're going to take you kind of through that process and show you how I post-process it and everything, get it ready for the plasma table. So let me swing you around here. What we got going right here is these three holes mount on the water neck on the Cummins. And then this is the lower what, radiator, lower, some part of there, lower. I'm just going off the measurements of what uh, his one I have over here is, but basically we'll come down uh, 7 16 of an inch to give this mounting point and this mounting point its most flat. And then we'll build mounts off of here and here that hug the alternator nice and close to the plate. So it should work out pretty good. Uh, this was the old one. He used what he had to make it and it did work for a while there, but uh, we're making it a little better for him. There's his alternator. So we're going to get going on this. We're going to finish modeling it, like I said. And I'll try and zoom in so you guys can kind of see and I'll time lapse it as I go. And then we'll take this, we'll flip it, and we'll copy the whole kind of thing and make it a 2D, measuring all the lines and stuff so we can get the bend points. We'll take the plasma and we'll cut this 90% of the way and then we'll bend that and weld it back up ourselves using 3 16 plate is the plan for this so uh, we'll get after it here Okay, I just threw together a couple mounts where the alternator brackets will be. These will be welded on after we laser sighted in and all that. Um, I gotta do some measuring. I want the plate. I want the alternator to sit about centered and as close to the plates as I can. So I gotta grab my digital gauge and stuff. I'll probably mess with it tomorrow night. Go hang out with the wife tonight, but. Um, I'll adjust these heights so that I can get it with maybe a half inch air gap on the plate. Get it as close to sitting there as I can. And after that, we'll call it good. We'll get all these heights and then we'll just copy these and remake the bottom plate into a 2D form and call it good. So that'll be tomorrow. We'll get all that figured out. So, All right, guys, it is the next evening. I did, when I shut the camera off last night, I did a little bit more work and I just created a flat pattern out of the 3D rendering of this. And tonight we're going to finish figuring out uh, how much height and everything we need for the actual standoffs that will be welded to the plate. Uh, I'll show you that and how I created the 2D pattern here. So I just projected this half and this half on a new sketch and then I measured the line of the bend which came out to be longer if you were to just project this and this straight up on the same uh, schemat not schematic but sketch uh, it would be too short here so you have to account for that bend and that's why I drew it in 3D first so that gave me uh, a way to distance this out so I just moved these that exact distance away from each other then did another sketch with a uh, box a rectangle I finished it out with projecting those and then I joined it all together whether or not that's really the right way to do this that's how I did it and then I measured out on this one from this edge to where the bend starts here and from this edge to where the bend starts here made my two lines and then we'll project 
this with the two lines as one sketch, save it as a DXF, and that will give us the cut file for this whole section, this piece. Um, so yeah, next we'll figure out exactly what heights we want these to be, remake those. Uh, we'll do the same idea, we'll make a sketch with the projected files and save them as a DXF and then we'll open them up and start going through the manufacturing process to make a cut file. So I'm gonna put you guys on the stand and we'll go through projecting this out real quick. Alright, so Sam was good with the one inch air gap. That actually probably works out better than a half inch due to it being bolted so close to the block of the engine. The extra inch will actually give a little bit of radiant heat, be able to pass past it and hopefully not overheat the alternator as bad. Um, I believe on my engine I actually have quite a bit of gap there, two, three inches with how it mounts on my Cummins. But uh, this should work just fine, no big deal there. So we're gonna go ahead and make new sketches. We'll probably flatten these out and we might nest them a little bit and do some weird stuff. We'll copy them and that kind of stuff and then we'll save those as a DXF cut file as well and then we'll go through the post process and maybe tomorrow night we'll get these cut out for him so uh, he can get putting it together. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll try and zoom in and explain what I'm doing as I'm going but uh, usually it won't take too long here. Open, open from computer, alternator bracket, Sam. That's gonna give us this 2D drawing, right? So then we can straight go straight into the manufacturer org zone. We're gonna switch the units to inches. For some reason, no matter if I set this as default, I have to change it every time. I'm gonna create a setup. We're gonna select a machine. We're not doing a milling process, change that to cutting first. We're gonna do select cutting. Razor cut 45, because that's what we're using. And I'm gonna change, uh, let's do the, this corner, stock placement. Let's see, the stock 4,000 so over, that's fine, that's fine, that's all right. So then we're gonna come over here, we're gonna make a 2D cutting profile. Select a machine, and let's do, 50, I have to go measure that, 55,000 curve, and we're actually going to run this down to about 15 inches per minute, just because I know that holes you got to cut way slower, and I'm going to do all the holes of these first. Okay, heights, you don't have to change anything. Passes, we're going to do switch to in computer and left compensation because it will make sure it cuts on the right better side of there. So this is where holes are pretty not too bad. We're gonna change the lead in distance to bigger than our curve. So we're gonna do 0 0.065. We're gonna do a 90 degree sweep in angle and we're gonna do a lead in radius of 0 0.025 or yeah, quarter inch would probably work. And we're gonna do a pierce clearance of zero. We'll see if that airs out. Nope, that looks all right. But what that'll do is when you come around and you cut your hole, it'll swing back through and cut, and it'll usually knock the nib off that you would get if you just cut in and cut out without a lead in or a lead out. Actually, I might edit that even and shorten the lead out. 
Let's see, lead in, lead in distance. Do I have lead out, exit? We're gonna show. We don't want to make the same as. We're gonna do lead out as. 90.025, but we're gonna make the lead out distance half the distance of before, so 0.04-ish. Because if you cut too much of a lead out distance on a circle, it sometimes errors it because it loses connectivity with the torch height control and stuff and jacks it up on the table. So this will work. Those should come out clean. We're going to cut those first. Then we're going to make another cut profile. And we're using the same tool. And then we know I can cut the outside much faster, so I'm going to do 40. Uh, let's see heights. That's fine. That's fine. We gotta switch to in computer left compensations good, and then we're gonna do a Lead in distance of one let's do an eighth Here so we'll do a 90 And nothing special there A contour of machines like oh Oops, helps if you select the lines. Hit OK, and we're going to make sure they're not cutting into any of our steel. Those look OK. This will notch into one of my pieces that will be all right. This is kind of waste, but um, that'll work. So now we're going to post process it. We're going to save the setup. Can't really see, but we're gonna go over here to the upper side of the manufacturer and hit save or setup, right click on it, and we're gonna say post process. Now, on this, the pierce delay in seconds, I'm actually going to up this. I've been playing with it, and Langmeyer says to do about a 0.6, but I wanna try this at one second and see if that helps. Sometimes the table will start to move before it's fully pierced the steel. So I'm going to see if the pierce delay helps with that. So I'm going to increase that up to 1. Uh, torch height control, yes. Yes, that's all good. Feed rate, maximum, blah, 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 blah. That's all good. We're going to name this. Uh, Sam alternator side brackets. Cut height's good. Well, we might actually start messing with cut height, I think. Some of my beveling, although I'm using a hand torch, so you can't really get it square to the table perfectly. Uh, I think I might be able to fix some of my issues if I mess with the tight torch, because or torch height. When you watch it, when you're cutting on the table, it looks higher than it should be. So we might actually do some measuring and do that, but it's it's really close right now. So uh, we're gonna leave that, and everything else is fine. So we're gonna hit post. We'll save this into my CNC Plasma Files folder. And we're done with that one. We're not going to save this. Don't save because it takes, I don't know, two minutes to put it back in there. So, same process for the other. Alright, so we're out here at the plasma table now. And we're going to load up Sam's main plate for his alternator bracket after we designed it there in Fusion. We're going to go ahead and cut that. I swapped out to some smaller sheets. Just to save metal, a sheet of 3 sixteenths is about 300 bucks right now, so if we can use smaller sheets, we will. So we're going to load this up here. Let's see, packing plate. Now I already got the table turned on so I can control it with the arrow keys here, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want this to start from. So I changed the inches per second. I'm sorry you can't see it. I don't have my other camera going, but I'm kind of jogging it so I can get as much of the metal used up as possible. So I'm going to zero. And we're going to set program origin to that corner right there. So what I'm going to do right now, since we already loaded the program, I'm just going to hit dry run. 
and then hit start and make sure that it's all functioning. Show you guys the cut quality here now that the compressor shut off. I haven't moved this or anything, but the holes are a little bit small and it did air since I didn't have the ground. This hole's a little jacked up, but they're not too bad for how small a hole they are. We'll just clean those up with a drill bit real quick. Should be just fine. See how hot the plate is here. A little bit of beveling. I've been I've readjusted this a couple times, but with the hand torch, I think it's almost impossible to get it perfectly square. You can see how much flex that has. Just uh, a machine torch would be a lot better, and I've thought about getting the upgrade for this for a machine torch. But later down the road, this will work good for what it is. So I'm gonna cut the other pieces now. guys just to try and get this part done real quick since Sam's gonna be in town tomorrow um, I just went ahead and used the digital gauge finder to bend it at the angles that I built everything around and I tacked it I tried tacking it with my MIG but it's an old Miller it really doesn't work that good and the tacks cracked right away so I went in ahead and tigged them went and tigged uh, some tacks on there and those are way strong so that'll be just fine it sounds like Sam's good with uh, finishing welding those up because I just want to make sure it all fits correctly like I think and I bent it the right direction uh, in theory I did but uh, without having the engine actually here that's the easiest way and then he's also going to borrow my laser that I have for aligning pulleys and belts and that kind of stuff when you fab belts they have to be within a certain amount off per inch of belt travel so uh, I have a laser level to do all that so he's gonna borrow all that stuff and he's gonna weld the mount and everything together so I'll show you what we got here my shop's a mess but I just bent this this makes up slack in a couple of his parts the measuring it out the holes come out right but I just want to make sure uh, everything's good before I finish welded it up for him those are those terrible MIG tacks but uh, then you got two separate sized mounts with two different bolt holes the longer ones will sit up in here somewhere and mount the top one and then the shorter ones will go on the back side and that will give the alternator roughly oh about an inch of clearance from this back plate which should be about right so yeah anyway guys thanks for checking out the video on the next one I will be sure to use a screen capture project and we'll go through the entire process of making a part from design all the way to cut with every little thing so you guys can actually see a little better and see what my process is you know I'm not saying my way is the best or whatever but it is a way and I get there in the end it may not be the fastest but uh, yeah that's how we go thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time